Blackstock of Glory Bible Fellowship International Church of Lee Summit, Missouri. Sit back, relax, and be ready to feel God's glory for your life. Glory, glory, glory. Good morning. Then you're here with me. This is Prophet Adrian Blackstock with a special broadcast for Cry Loud Ministry. Amen. I'm located in Lee Summit, Missouri, is where my office is. And Today I have a special broadcast, and my pastor is here, staying over with me, if you was listening with us from the morning glory. But the Lord laid upon my heart earlier this month for me to do um, two special broadcasts just in the realm because of what's going on in the realm of the Spirit during this time. And so today I am going to be dealing with the power of deliverance. Amen? The power of deliverance. I want to deal with some things in reference to, to how can we stay free and to deal with some myths, Pastor Adam. And I don't know if we have enough time. We were discussing this morning. Uh, we're seeing so many people's lives change through Cry Loud Ministry and the anointing that God has on my life. And I just want to say I appreciate you for um, allowing my gift and recognize that the gift in the area of deliverance is needed for the church. So I want to thank um, my pastor and my husband and all the intercessors that and the cry loud team that support me in that. But Pastor, I want to I want to read I want to deal with some some myths and some statements that and, and also to enlighten you. There is no doubt that Satan and demons attack Christians. They may seem to be special targets of the enemies of God because they are the children of God and hated as God is hated. Some do not recognize the full range of activities leveled against the children of God because they think that salvation automatically protects us from all sorts of evil. This simply is not so. So many Christians believe that lie that because you have accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, that that's supposed to cover you and keep you where um, safe folks say, hey, you know what, because you confess Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you're off limits to me. That is not the case. There is, in fact, a strong tendency among many Christians to be naive concerning their arts foe Satan and his demon assistance. you got to understand that. These demons assist Satan. To be ignorant or misinformed on this subject is weighted with dire risk. Yet believers sometimes display an obvious disinterest in what the Bible reveals about such a study. The empathy or dread is almost as perilous as perilous as the opposite extreme of fanatical occupation with evil. So we delight into allowing Satan to just run havoc in our lives. They prove to be a dangerous, a dangerous to our spirit man, our soul man, and our bodies. And so I, I really want to understand that even in this season, the time that we're in with the summer solace, there is a lot of demonic activity that's taking place. And I've been getting some inboxes and people on Facebook, you know, saying, you know what, I didn't know what it was, but I can understand and I'll try to explain to people and, you know, People just try to write it off. And I have a, 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 a woman that had spoke with me, and she was trying to, you know, tell her husband, oh, let's pray or what have you. And the statement that he made that so many Christians make the same statement, I believe, well, I'm not bothering them, so it, it ain't going to affect me. And that is that is a lie. We have our portion that we need to do. Well, let, let's just make it common sense here, right, Prophetess? And uh, this, this is why... Uh, sometimes you have to you have to recognize uh, how silly we are as Christians when we just don't it, it don't it, we don't even think uh, with common sense. This Satan attacked uh, God, right? <laughs> right. I know what you're he, going to he, he, he hate he hate God. He, he attacked Jesus, right? <laughs> and we're supposed to be uh, the sons of God. Right, Bible says we have he we, he gives us power to become sons of God, right? With that same authority to become sons of God, that means we also become enemies of Satan. Mm -hmm. Naturally, you related if you're related to the king and they try to kill a king, don't you think they want to try and kill you? They want to attack you, of course. But we don't put it that way. We think that we walk in some uh, uh, special bubble that makes us exempt. Like, you know, it used to be, you used to be in New York. I used to drive me. Right? I'm driving my car. I used to go come against somebody, and they walk in the middle of the street. And I used to say, they must think they they made a bumper. 
They just have a they they've been injected with a bumper shot that they repel everything. But it, that's what we think we are. We we don't have we we immune uh, to the wills of Satan. Uh, we're only immune to it if we at least know that it that he's doing it, and we know how to uh, what did it say? Um, um, it knock uh, it give us the the special uh, things that we need to do to keep us safe from uh, the wiles of Satan. But the wiles of Satan are always there. In fact, I, one of the things that I want to share that in this time and the reason why we have a lot of demonic activity and a lot of filtration within the Christians themselves is because of sexual immorality. The reason why there wasn't a lot of demonic um, influence and a lot of the Christians of the days of old could, you know, I can see why they could believe that, that a, a, a Christian couldn't have demons because they didn't have to wrestle with what we're wrestling with right now. Right. We're, and the, the Bible says that Satan is the prince of the air. Everything right now flows through Satan's domain, which is your telephones, your Internet, the computers. You know, back in the day, you know, everybody would know who went to the um, the little rated X shows or what have you. you and many people wouldn't do that because they're like, I don't want nobody to see me go in that building. But right now you have so many people that don't understand that are hooked on pornography and that because they don't understand how satanic worship works or they don't understand what takes place in the Illuminati, they don't know that they're working in the, side, in the realm of darkness. Let me help you. Anything that Satan is involved in is going to have the sexual immorality piece in there. If you got witchcraft, it's you're going to have sex. So just because you think that you're a Christian, and that's the reason why God says stay out of fornication and stay out of adultery, because he that is the error that Satan utilizes. So when you're watching pornography, amen, and you're not understanding what is taking place, how demonic spirits play a role in that, and that you'll literally open up a portal for demonic spirits. And that's the reason why the people get so and drenched in it, and it doesn't have any, think about it, I know men that have beautiful wives, beautiful wives, you, you, let me help you understand, I'm not telling you something I read from a book, I, I provide counseling, I provide one-on-one deliverance meeting from people from all type of walks of life and over the world, and I've had these cases, and how could you have a beautiful woman and you not want to touch your, touch your wife, you'd rather go watch, you know, flicks. Because now that person has opened themselves up. It's a demonic spirit that is functioning, and and and, it's, and you have to go through deliverance to shut to shut that door. And Satan means for keeps, amen. So that's the reason why the church we can't sit back silence about this and say, you know, we're not going to talk about this from the pulpit. Of don't people are coming, Pastor Adam, for what you got children that. Are, are getting involved into dealing with the Ouija board and then this other new card game that's out there. You got, um, I've, I've got cases of, I have um, school teachers uh, that's in our congregation and how the ch- one of the child brought tarot cards to school. And then you wonder why these children are sitting in special ed education because demonic spirits are influencing our community. And so we need, they say the kingdom suffers violently, and we got to take it by force. We can no longer sit back and, and try to, you know, act like, you know, oh, you know, everything's going to be all right. Yeah, that's just a medical condition. Everything is not always medical, amen. There is a spiritual component. I have a master's in social work, and even I know that in some of the things, I've had clients that would, would tell me, and I didn't even know it. I used to always fast on a Wednesday because back in my early days, Pastor Adam, I didn't know about spirits. But there was a woman that came to me afterwards years later, and this woman now was doing better and set free. She said, it was something about when you would come and do our meetings that would, that I just knew. And this woman, when other people meet, she was always going to be an issue. Well, God had me fasting so that when I took over was holding those counseling groups, those demonic spirits wouldn't manifest and wouldn't operate. That's the power of fact. Remember when Jesus was free, he said, and they came to him, and Jesus said, this kind only comes out by prayer and mm, fasting. Right. Amen. Mm-hmm. There are some doors that we have opened. There are some generational curses. Listen, you may not have been the one in, that was involved in witchcraft, but the Bible is very clear. It said it affects the third and fourth generation. So, therefore, 
We have to destroy and break that. We have to destroy the generational curses, not only in open doors or simple acts, but I see we had a, a marvelous situation that we sat in with a genetics that deal with the health from KU, and he was showing the mapping that you can actually do for when it comes to health. Now, and we see that so much in, in our lives in the Christian community where your mother had cancer, your grandmother had cancer, the next generation, and we don't do anything about it. It's, we just call it generational curses, but even as a, he was a doctor, and he was showing how this stuff can be broken and stopped. So how much more can we do this in a spiritual realm by waking up and taking our stand? Oh, I know I'm making the devil mad today, amen, but because of the power of the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you can be set free. You can set your generations free. You can set your children free. We got to wake up and pull our heads out of the sand and stop saying, you know, oh, that's that's just a phase that they're going through. But there is a body of believers. There are people that listen to me right now. You are weeping because you say, I know that there is something more. Yes, I go to church. Yes, I pay my tithe. But there is a demonic force that is affecting my bloodline. And I'm here today that God is saying that if you lay hold of it, amen, and lay hold and get in that position to make your mind up to stand flat-footed against the enemy and say, the bug stop here, you are not going to infiltrate my bloodline any longer. Also, we don't understand familiar spirits. Familiar spirits function from one bloodline to the next. It takes one to rise up. And you can, spirit. I call it spiritual map, you know, if you see alcoholic that's run through, uh, you know, alcoholism run through the bloodline, drug addiction run through the bloodline, whatever that is, that's the spirit that you need to stand against and destroy. Amen. And the Lord just spoke to me. Mark your calendars for July the 29th, Friday. Cry loud. I'll be doing the deliverance meeting. It'll be housed at Glory Bow Fellowship International Church. So mark that on your calendar. Amen. So we can get some things taken care of in the spirit realm. Hey Amen, prophetess. You know, it just reminded me of you know me. I'm always visual and uh, like the spirit of addiction, mm-hmm. right? It that is a true spirit, right? It's called it. It lies into the head demons, the spirit of escape. And spirit of escape and spirit of uh, a pharmacia, right? Yeah. It's it, it's likened unto witchcraft. They use it in uh, witchcraft. But uh, I remember, you know, back in the 1980s or 1990s, there was a movie called New Jack City. Right, and, and there was one character. His name was Pookie. And, 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 I have a and, 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 name Pookie. And, and, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and Pookie said, uh, uh, they, they, "They asked what happened to you, Pookie. You, you got addicted again. Uh, he got back in addiction, and he said it was call. It was calling me. It was calling me. It was calling. That spirit of addiction calls out. Yeah. When you when you have doors open." Amen. So, prophetess, you have to help the people to uh, to close doors. The deliverance meeting on uh, July the 29th is going to make a difference for sure. But how can they get those doors closed before then? I do one-on-one deliverance. You just need to call me at 816-728-7447. But you got to be serious. I'm not to play with. Amen. Because you're going to have to do what I want you to do. That's the most... You know, because there's some, you know, the deliverance, corporate deliverance meeting, you come in there. If you fast, I have this. God has given it to me over the years. If you fast the day before, the day of, and the day after, it really makes less manifestations. It really also breaks up the fallow ground. And so, but there are some errors in our lives. I have some special cases. Um, and I don't know if even if I don't know if, if if she's even listening and want to call in. She'll have to say who her name is. That I'm working on a special case. Well, this year I worked with three um, young three young ladies of different ages that came out of satanic worship. They was taught that. They was born into that. So God can't fault them, but at the point that they woke up and say, wait a minute, and, and let me tell you, it's because that young lady have to be going to class and she seen the light of Jesus Christ on one of our believers. And she was like, it, it was like, you know what, there's something different about her. I know I've been taught about all this darkness since the time I was born. Let's show you the power of Jesus Christ. That's the reason why God is calling the body of Christ in the church of God to walk in holiness and purity. Because when you walk in holiness and purity, the people can see the Jesus in you and on you. That it will cause those that are so drenched and deep. Here's somebody that's been trained from their whole entire life. 
about the demonic realm and about demons. And I've learned a lot from working with her. So iron sharpens iron. Things that we have no idea to know about. It's not even written in books. But because she sees something, it made her, after all the the all the abuse and everything they did to her, she seen Jesus in the light of a believer and wanted to say, I there got to be something more than what they told me. Never read a Bible, never seen anything. Only thing she was trained was about demons all yeah. her life. But because she's seen the power of God, that's the reason why God wants the church to get cleansed and purified so that you will be able to impact the lives of those that are out in the world. I'm talking to the church folks right now that's sitting in church that di- with, with, with demonic spirits that you open doors to, your pastor done told you to close doors and you haven't done it. And y'all don't understand that Satan means for keep. It doesn't mean because you go to church every Sunday he's going to leave you alone. You can, demonic spirits can sit in churches and unless you have anointing to destroy that, it ain't going man- to cause them to go nowhere. You just going to go to church, hear the word, go right back out and what? Do the same thing that you was doing. Yeah, uh, I was. I, I hear this all the time, and this is something that you I do a great job of helping people do. People have to fall out of agreement uh, with some of these devils that they they shaking hands with. Come right? on now. Uh, uh, somebody, some you know, reason why you're still in poverty, some reason why you're still in lack is because you still agree with them. You still uh, accept that that's your reality, and you need to fall out of agreement with them. You need to fall out of agreement with unforgiveness. You need to fall out of agreement with uh, guilt. You need to fall out of a guilt uh, out of agreement with envy and and jealousy. You need to fall out of agreement with these spirits, because as long as you're agreeing with them, uh, not only will you flow in them, they'll start affecting you physically. Your body will start to oh, deteriorate yes. because you're still in agreement with some of these spirits. I cannot tell how. That's one of the reasons for those of us that work in the realm of deliverance is that we deal with, I deal with unforgiveness in all the meetings. The people don't understand that the spirit of unforgiveness brings in the spirit of affirmity. Let me put it. It brings in infirmity, demonic spirits. Amen. And so that's even in a realm when I get somebody to have to pray for that's with cancer or something like that. I want to look at their forgiveness walk because it's a spirit of rebellion. That's what cancer is. It gets one cell out here by itself and it causes. Now, all cases like that, but many of times because we hold on to offenses, we hold on to anger. So it opens the doors for the. And, and here's what demonic spirits do Satan has a. Let me see. He has a grand uh, ranking system. It's only us in the body of Christ that we don't want to work together. They work together. They make pacts. The demon, I have one case like this that I had a um, deliverance, um, deliverance meeting for. I, the person talking about nicotine, wanting to get rid of the nicotine. But the nicotine spirit had made a pact with, I can't remember what the other spirit was, made a pact with the other spirit. Mm. So the other spirit said, nicotine, I'll allow you to stay here in this vessel as, as long as I'm going to be able to stay here. And so, therefore, they work together. But if you don't know that, and you ain't got to know all that, but you got to be open to that if there are people that flow in the realm of deliverance, you got to make your mind up and stop being duped by Satan. Because Satan's ultimate goal is to destroy as many people as possible and hinder the advancement of the kingdom of God and its complete restoration. His arch enemies are the Lord Jesus Christ and his body of believers who have made Jesus Christ their Savior and Lord. If I can get the church people to be full of sin, then they lose their power. Amen. You're supposed to be in the people say, oh, probably. no, but you cannot fight against Satan with open doors. You cannot fight and have unforgiveness in your heart and not walk in love. Those demons not going to move. That's why when you say the name of Jesus, they look at you like, and we know plenty. You have no idea. They got they got plenty of things they utilize with the false name of Jesus. But when you have purity and holiness in your life, when some of you. I want you to know that you have a call of God in your life to be used in the area of deliverance. God wants you to get cleansed and purified. We, I'm speaking to the church. We cannot be in God's pulpit and allow any and everything to take place. We have to raise the standard in the name of Jesus. I'm not asking. And here's something that I, I got from my teenager which really, really burns my biscuits. I don't have an issue with individuals that's not on my level. But don't try to bring me down to your level. Just be honest with your yourself and say, hey, I'm not there yet. God has called, I 
I read the same Bible everybody else read. And he said, be holy as I am holy. Amen. We cannot. I, uh, oh, let me pass that. You know where I'm going. Stop. I'm tired of hearing this statement. Oh, God knows my heart. Shut up. You know what my shut up stands for? Silence how you think and pray. God, you cannot change the word of God to fit our lifestyle and the way we want to live. Amen. If you don't want Jesus, stay out there in the world. Hallelujah. We do God a disservice. He says it's like a dog returning back to his own. But I'm preaching real good. Why? I'm coming to shake you, to let you know what the word of God said. He said Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And just because you ignorant to his, his devices doesn't mean that it has you to be exempt. So I am urging you to get in your word, to follow. Fall out agreement with these demonic spirits. Fall out agreement. Ladies, keep the legs closed. Men, zip up your zipper. If you have a sexual addiction, get help. God says, what you reveal, I can heal. The wages of sin is death. Yeah, Hallelujah. Yeah, prophet. Uh, and, and, you know, you know my saying. If you, if you tell me God knows my heart, right? My response to that is, yes, he does. And he knows your heart went in doing right in the first place. That's why you're doing wrong. He knows where your heart truly is because if your heart was with him, you wouldn't be going to that whorehouse or, or, or to the strip club like you're going. If your heart was really with God, you wouldn't be going to get that extra bottle of alcohol. If your heart was right, you wouldn't make the wrong choice so when god when you say god knows my heart the answer is you're correct he knows exactly what your heart is and right now your heart is filled with blackness right now your heart was filled with wrong right now your heart is filled with the wrong desires and you have to understand uh, that god knows your heart amen and so this is what the the, the call of god on my life outside of being a a pastor is to help the body of Christ, equip the saints. We're in a spiritual battle, and the battle is between God and Satan over the soul of man. Come on, parents. We got to walk and write and do this thing right, because then it won't affect our children. My heart gets to be so grieved when I see uh, uh, single, what are they, single mothers or parents. I'm like, if you can't do it for yourself, do it for your children. Your children didn't ask to be born. They ain't ask to be hooked up with these crazy daddies that you got hooked up with. They didn't ask to be hooked for you to be hooked up with these crazy women, men that you got hooked up with. But now the children is here. You make a stand and, or what have you so that that child can have a better life. My grandmother had three children that all had suffered with drug addiction, but she didn't know what I know right now. And the next Next generation, none of us, from me and the next generation, none of us, because it was destroyed. Because as I've got to understand and learn what the blood of Jesus can do in our lives, God destroyed and, and has destroyed that bloodline. Amen? Amen. And, and I heard this. Uh, stop cursing your children by saying, oh, he's just like his daddy, or he just like, uh, uh, just, or she's just like her mama. What? Stop that. Uh, if you if you're saying that, uh, let it be the blessings of the father. Like he is so smart, just like his daddy, or uh, uh, he uh, is strong, just like his dad. Do those things. Don't say, uh, well, he's a knucklehead like his daddy. Uh, uh, he's he's never gonna mount to nothing, just like your daddy. When you say that, you are cursing your children. You are sending out negative uh, uh, word curses. Over your family. Pastor, I'm picking up on this. The Lord is showing me this because there is a woman and you have been dealing with demonic activity in your house. And the reason why you're dealing with demonic activity is because you have objects in your house that are have attachment to Satan. And so you need to search your house and find what those objects are. And probably you don't know that it's there or you just think it's innocent. And that's a whole other area of past. I don't know how much more time I have because I want to get this prayer out. If um, Debbie D can tell me how much time I have because I want to do this prayer. But objects as well um, carry Demonic spirit. They like they want a body, but they are be attached to objects. You got the Ouija boards. They show somebody sent me now. They got the Ouija board cups. They they know that you ain't you you ain't dumb enough to go buy the Ouija board. So let me put it on a cup, and then you can bring it to your house. So 
whoever that is, God is, and then he's also talking to all of us, cleanse your house up of these objects, amen. I want us to read, I'm going to read this prayer. You lay a hold of it and say, amen. Heavenly Father, you have told us to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regard to his lust. We acknowledge that we have given in to fleshy lust which weighs war against the soul. We thank you that Christ that our sins have been forgiven, but we have transgressed your holy law and given the enemy opportunity to wage war in our members. We come before your presence to acknowledge these sins and to seek your cleansing that we may be free from the bondage of sin. We now ask you to reveal to our mind the ways that we have transgressed your moral lives and grieved the Holy Spirit. So now we confess these sins to you and claim freedom from the blood by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who came in the flesh for our forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. That's a fresh start for you today to start walking some things out, to start closing some doors. Some of you know you got some open doors, and you're going to need to fight. Just like you've been bonded to that sin for 40 years, deliverance is progressive. You do your part. God will do his. Once again, you remember this is Cry Loud Ministry. You can find me on Facebook under Cry Loud Ministry. Amen. If you have any questions, I didn't get a chance to open up the prayer line here. But this is the area that we're in a spiritual battle, and we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but it, but principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places, and we must take our assignment seriously. We are in the spiritual arm of the Lord, but God is raising up some warriors that know how to stand and utilize the name of Jesus that comes from a place of purity, the word of God, and know how to plead the blood of Jesus so that we can keep these doors closed and so that we can be able to stand now and fight against the territorial spirit. Our fight is not here in the church. Our fight is not with your neighbors and your children. The enemy is just trying to keep you bound so that we won't be about the Father's business and deal with what's affecting over our our cities, what's affecting over our neighborhoods because it takes purity to bring Bring down those type of territorial spirits in the name of Jesus. Stop the violence that's in our neighborhood. That's a spirit of death and a spirit of destruction that has been released in our neighborhood. But the power of the blood will be able to help us cleanse it. So once again, this prophet Adrian Blackstock, Cry Loud Ministry. Find me on Facebook, 816-728-7447. God bless you, and Jesus is Lord. Amen. Well, I finally improved my credit score. What? The band is about to be discovered. Rock gods don't need to worry about credit scores. We're supposed to think about how many guitars we've smashed, make ridiculous on-tour requests, tragically break up and blame creative differences. Yeah, I'm not banking my retirement on a band that's never left your garage. When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. My dad came to live with us last month, and you know, it's going pretty well. I feel like I never have time for myself. With him being around more, it really lets us catch up on things. His memory isn't what it used to be. We get up, and we have coffee. He usually wakes up at 4.30. Then we go for a walk. He needs lots of my attention. I do need to keep an eye on his medications, though. That's important. Sometimes I feel like a pharmacist. I'd say John and the kids are adjusting pretty well. They honestly have no idea what I'm going through. It can be a little challenging. Help. But so far, so good. I could really use just a little help. For those dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers for advice, tips, and support. Together, let's help each other better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Okay, what are you wearing right now? Nothing. That's right. So Mommy's going to teach you how to dress yourself. Underwear always comes first. Name tag at the back, then pants, then shirt. Get the first button in the right hole or you have to start all over. Socks going first, then shoes right on right, left on left. With shoelaces, just take the ends, cross them over, switch the loops. The rabbit goes down the hole, pull tight, and you're left with bunny ears. Got it? Why are your pants on your head? Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day, making sure they brush their teeth is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Visit 2min2x.org to find out more. A message from the Partnership for Healthy Mouths, Healthy Lives, and the Ag Council. Déjame preguntarte algo. ¿Sentarías a tu hijo de tres años al borde de una ventana? ¿Lo sentarías al lado de una chimenea encendida o al borde de una piscina profunda? Una última pregunta. ¿Sentarías a tu hijo en un car seat que no es el correcto? 
Los choques de autos son una de las principales causas de muerte en niños de 1 a 13 años. Asegúrale su futuro. Siéntalos en el car seat correcto. Para más información visita safercar.gov diagonal protegidos. Un mensaje del National Highway Traffic Safety Administration y el Ad Council. KPRT Kansas City, your number one station for inspiration and praise. Gospel 1590 KPRT. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Urban Summit broadcast, where we seek to inform you, the public, on issues important to the community. We urge you to join us and be part of the solutions to the challenges we face in the areas of crime, housing, education, health, economic development, and others. If you would like to be part of our Friday meetings, please call Don Hicklin at 816-881-3163 or our website at kcurbansummit.com. And now, 